Ellen Raup of Reedsburg calls this quilt her Christmas quilt because she brings it out each year at Christmas time. It was a first for her, both in machine quilting and strip quilting methods. Christmas quilt was created in a block a month class where Ellen met other quilters. She says she enjoyed the class and found it fun to work with women of all ages, from young mothers to grandmothers. All shared a love for quilting. Kitty Howes of Baraboo made Star of Jerusalem for her husband for Christmas after he complained that all her quilts were given away. Kitty also made spools, which was inspired by her border fabric which had many different colored spools. After spending many hours quilting on black, Kitty has decided that she will never put her eyes through the strain again. This quilt was made by Dottie Dozer of Manaqua for the altar of St. Matthias Episcopal Church in Manaqua. It features Pentecost symbols, a descending dove, and tongues of fire. The background is quilted with a shell pattern. The quilt combines traditional and contemporary elements which tie it to the arts and crafts style of the church. In 1998, when the town of Dale celebrated the Wisconsin sesquicentennial, Cindy Ward made this quilt to commemorate the town's prominent buildings of the past, such as the Young's Hotel, the Dale Train Depot, and the Dale Opera House. To recreate the buildings, she enlarged old photographs into line drawings, then appliqued them to the backgrounds. Today, only one of the buildings is still standing. The quilt hangs in the Dale Town Hall. Hanging from the ceiling of the new Gerald A. Bartell Community Theater in Madison are these five machine applique quilts, quilted by Renee Shadavy of Lodi. Shortly after the theater was built, it was discovered that the high ceilings in the lobby caused a sound problem, and Renee was enlisted to make banners to deaden the noise during intermissions. Renee came up with the idea to make quilts for the banners, and to incorporate the names of each of the theater groups currently housed in the theater onto the quilts. She and helpers Joellen Quinn of Madison and Donna Teagan of Two Rivers chose bright, glitzy colors to represent theater in all of its glory and glamour, and used flashy metallic threads to catch the spotlights so they would twinkle when theatergoers looked up at the high ceiling. Three of the quilt borders are geese, representing the crew always up on high working on sets and lighting, and the others are stars, like the actors. Daisy Williamson of Madison made this colorful quilt, Batik Madness, out of her husband's old batik shirts, which he wore during their years living in Indonesia. Fabric designs in the quilt include the Indonesian eagle, Balinese dancers, and traditional Javanese design, all brought together into a basic log cabin pattern. Neckties are what provided the diverse fabric patterns in this crazy quilt by Phyllis Tabbert of Lac de Flambeau. Framed by a border of red satin and navy silk taffeta, each 12-inch block is embroidered with festive thread colors and embroidery floss, and embellished with buttons, lace, yo-yos, and other hand embroidery. Nine of the 24 blocks were made by Phyllis's friends in the Pine Tree Piecers Club of Park Falls. The Mariner's Compass was made by Carol Nelson of Green Bay. It was her first experience with machine quilting and paper piecing, and she found making the flying geese pattern a challenge. The center design was taken from the book Mariner's Compass Quilts, New Directions by Judy Matheson. The Mariner's Compass will be used in a silent auction at Carol's Church this fall. The Way Home is an original design variation of the traditional Mariner's Compass Block, made by Chris Kirsch of Economawalk. It was inspired by a contest sponsored by the Museum of the American Quilter in Paducah, Kentucky. Chris had made many round compasses, but this competition gave her permission to play with different shapes. It was one of 18 winning entries in the contest and became part of a traveling exhibition. Karen Matisson of Madison quilted Baltimore Bargello in response to a quilting contest. She was always interested in making a Baltimore album quilt, but she wanted to make it original. She followed the traditional pattern and using 3D applique, put her own twist on the final design.
Ellen Groff of Menasha made this quilt attic treasure with her friend Jan Zeno of North Carolina. Ellen and Jan did a block exchange of 50 blocks. This quilt kept Ellen and Jan connected in spite of the distance. They plan to do it again. Catherine Sunquist of Grantsburg made this Green Bay Packer Backer quilt as a gift for her husband. There are 11 stars to represent the 11 players on the field. Catherine used a copy machine to enlarge coloring book figures and with these designed her own pattern. The mess in the middle is a tackle of four players. Laughter is the name of this quilt submitted by Laura Tomokomai of Madison. She used the photo transfer technique to fill the quilt with pictures of children laughing. To complement the photos, she gathered bright rainbow fabrics that also bring a smile to the face. Flowered elephants, stripes and polka dots, balloons, bubbles, stars, and more. Many of the photos are of herself and sister as a child. The quilt was pieced by Laura and machine quilted by Diane Serling using a variegated rainbow thread. <laughs>